everyone myself webho in our today's session of visual tip forex i am going to make you familiar with an indicator named plus directional indicator this is a momentum indicator which can be utilized to see the strength of the trend of any underlying instrument so we will see how we can deploy this uh, indicator block on the visual j forex platform to develop the automated trading setup this is part of the momentum series and we have so far covered many of these indicators now in today's session it is the turn now plus di plus directional index this is the indicator which is also used while determining the average directional index here we take the dm that is the directional movement index and then using the atr we find out the directional indicator and then this indicator can be utilized to see what is the strength of any momentum this is the formula given here we have to take the dm and uh, to smooth it we take the cumulative summation of the directional indicator directional movement indicator and uh, then we divide it by the atr and uh, multiply it by 100 so we get this uh, formula for uh, plus directional indicator the positive directional indicator now let us head to the chart here i have plotted the plus di positive directional indi indicator on the hourly chart of usd jpy and uh, this uh, simple uh, setup is to see what is the output value of this uh, plus di and uh, if the value is about 25 then the momentum is considered strongly bullish and if the value is uh, below 25 that means not much of a momentum is there the price action you can say more or less is uh, sideways is in consolidation phase so the sign of uh, bullish tendency is the value above 25 as and when we see value crossing above 25 for plus directional indicator we can think about going in for a fresh trade in the direction of the movement and uh, since this indicator is uh, unidirectional that means it only deals with the bullish trades and uh, we don't really use this to find out the sell trade so here we can use this to find out figure out the optimum entry points for going long in any instrument of our choice and the setup is fairly simple all we have to do is keep a watch on this uh, output value for the plus di and uh, another way we can utilize this indicator to determine the trading opportunities is uh, when we see sharp uh, turn in the values of this uh, di indicator if we see in just couple of hours if the plus di values goes on to rise sharply even in such scenarios we can go for fresh long trades and also other indicators can also be used to give us a better idea of the strength and uh, the direction of the underlying instrument so we can use this indicator as a standalone indicator as well as in conjunction with other technical tools so both ways we can work with this and uh, this is uh, going to help us in uh, finding out the opportunities to make profitable trades now going back to this visual j forex board developed by the ducoscopy bank sa here we add the momentum indicator named plus di so here we get this indicator block we have to define the input parameters and depending on the combination of the input parameters we will be getting the output value which then can be utilized to see if the time to go for long trades has horizon or not in a today's session we keep the trade event as our start point now coming to this uh, defining of input parameters the instrument can be the any instrument of your choice as long as it is supported on this platform so here you get the list of all the instruments which are available for your utility 
in our today's session let's take a uh, volatile instrument let's go for gpp jpy gpp jpy keeps moving and uh, many traders who prefer to trade in highly volatile instruments prefer to trade with gpp jpy let us change here also gpp jpy okay so here we got this gpp jpy chart and as you can see the gpp jpy has been trading in a sideways uh, trajectory though this uh, even though on the chart this range is looking narrow still it is of 100 pips and uh, as you can notice whenever we see the momentum gaining strength this uh, value goes on to rise about 25 but it uh, hasn't really sustained so if we were simply trading on the basis of this single indicator then i think uh, most of these trades might end up in losses so that's why i said it's not an uh, easy proposition to figure out the profitable setup so we have to be pretty diligent and uh, make observations and also test it extensively and then only you will get the combination which can prove pro fairly profitable and uh, when the gpp jpy was in a bearish trajectory here you can see that uh, we saw extended period of time when the plus di value was uh, below 25 that means there is no bullish tendency in the underlying instrument and uh, then as you can observe from the chart the gpjpy kept falling once in a while we got this uh, upward spike but it didn't really last and here we are again back to this uh, price zone around uh, 135 now coming to the appropriate time frame what is the time frame which you are comfortable trading with should be taken as the uh, indicators time value time frame for calculation on the ADX if you prefer to trade on the smaller time frame you can do so if you prefer to trade on the longer time frame you can well you can do so as well so it uh, fairly is a question of what is your risk uh, taking capacity whether you prefer to go with sharp stop losses and targets or if you prefer to go with uh, wide stop losses and target so depending on that the combination will need to be worked out now we have taken this gpp jpy as our uh, default instrument now we make it 30 minutes and to that coming to the look back period now look back period defines the uh, you can say which output value is to be taken into consideration if the look back period that is shift is zero then the current output value will be taken into consideration if the shift value is 10 then here we will be going back 10 candlesticks of half an hour each that means we will be going back 5 hours in 5 hours backward now the time is 9 gmt and we will be taking into account the 4 gmt value and that is uh, the value which needs to be taken into consideration if the shift is uh, zero so this value will be utilized to do the comparison or for any calculation or whichever way you deem fit so depending on this shift value you will have the output value presented to you for uh, further utility time period time period is the time which is going to be used for uh, smoothing the dm the difference between the current high and the prior highs we find out that difference to calculate the dm and then we take the cumulative values to smooth it over a time period of time and that is the time period if you are looking at this this is uh, of 14 this is the default value the 14 time period is being used for calculation of this plus dei you can extend it you can reduce it and depending on that you will see some difference creeping up in the output value if we simply make it 30 
so here we will have more smoother di values not much of an extreme so depending on the time period for calculation of the di we get uh, the plus directional indicator values so that's how this uh, system works so depending on these uh, input parameters you will get the output value which then can be utilized by simply taking it this output value to which your block if you want to do calculation all you have to do is take a component block of mathematical nature here you have these options suppose for example you want to do a calculation involving this then all you have to do is put it here and you have this plus di value now suppose if you want to simply find out the difference between uh, say current di output and say the di value 10 candlesticks period back then all you have to do is take the another plus di block with the shift value of 10 while keeping other input parameters the same and then you can take out the difference and see if it is on rise or it is declining so that way also it will work or you can simply take any if else statement if block and simply put in the output value and uh, put in the second condition and then that condition will be in play and will need to be satisfied before the flow can move forward so this is the, the indicator block and uh, we are almost done and uh, coming to the settings we have to choose on which side we want the di value to be calculated whether on the bid side or on the ask side and applied price also the candlesticks price which is going to be taken into consideration while calculating the plus di value so that's it from my side for today's session if any of you have any query or any idea to share you can write it in the comment section and i would be more than happy to take the discussion forward thank you all for joining in see you tomorrow goodbye